Continuous sclerosin therapy for primary aneurysm of bones is our experience. Yeah. A very good afternoon to everyone gathered here. Today I am going to present a topic that we have studied in our institute, that is Tata Memorial Hospital, on a primary aneurysmal bone cyst treated with percutaneous sclerosin therapy. Coming to, as everyone knows, aneurysmal bone cysts are benign bone lesions predominantly occurring in the pediatric population that presents with local pain, swelling, and occasionally with pathological fractures. They can occur in a primary setting where they arise de novo or maybe at the back of a secondary setting in which a pre-existing bone lesion may be there like a giant cell tumor, chondroblastoma, chondromyxoid fibroma. The traditional treatment option available for these lesions are oblock resection, curettage, percutaneous sclerotherapy and even angioembolization. The aim of our study was to evaluate the functional and oncological results of primary aneurysmal bone cysts treated with percutaneous sclerosin therapy. This comes at the back of two landmark papers from All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi, where in the first paper they studied 72 cases with primary aneurysmal bone cysts treated with uh, percutaneous sclerotherapy with polydocanol. And in the second, they studied, uh, they compared patients with uh, primary ABCs and they divided into two groups, one which received percutaneous sclerotherapy and the other which underwent curettage and bone grafting. And they found that the group, that the healing rates were comparable in both the groups, but the functional outcome and the complication rates were lesser in the group which received percutaneous sclerotherapy. Coming to the methods of our study, the duration of our study was from May 2009 to September 2015, where we saw 69 patients of primary aneurysmal bone cysts. Out of this, 60 patients received sclerosant injections. The remaining underwent surgery. The kind of cases that had to undergo surgery were these, where a young male child with proximal femur aneurysmal bone cyst presented with a pathological fracture, which had to undergo curettage, bone grafting, and a fixation. So in our study, the, we in, uh, gave 3% polydocanol injection on OPD basis, 1 cc per square centimeter, a maximum of 5 ml per session. The mechanism is that it damages the lining of the cyst triggering a coagulation cascade and causing a thrombotic occlusion of the blood vessels leading to healing of the lesion. The injection that we used, coming to the technique that we had, uh, this was obviously done in a OR, sterile settings, sterile ripping. We localized the uh, lesion under uh, image guidance. Then we gave a local anesthesia. In pediatric population, we gave a general anesthesia. Then once that is done, we give a stab and a needle insertion and break the septes of the aneurysmal bone cysts. Then aspirate the hemorrhagic fluid. Once that is done, you inject the sclerosin injection and wait for it to act and prevent backflow of it. Then a sterile wash was given with normal saline. Now, the methods again. We evaluated these lesions at the end of six to eight weeks clinically and radiologically, and a repeat injection was given if necessary. So what are the markers that we looked at? There were the clinical markers, obviously, like a decrease in pain and an improvement in range of motion of the nearby joints, and a radiological markers like the starting of sclerosis and a stability in the size of the lesions. The distribution of the lesions that we saw in our institute were uh, predominantly in the lower limb. There was uh, more predominance in the proximal tibia that we saw. The number of injections that we had to give, 26 patients healed with a single injection, 20 with two, and there were around 14 which required more than three or more than three injections. So out of the total 60 patients who we gave sclerotherapy, 56 were available for a regular follow-up, four were lost. Out of those 56, 50 healed with the sclerosin injection itself but six had to undergo a surgery in the form of either a curettage or en bloc resection. Coming to the cases that we had, uh, this is the first case, a 12-year-old female with a proximal tibia aneurysmal bone cyst. The MRI is showing the classical fluid-fluid level in the axial sections. This is the imaging post six weeks of the sclerosant and post four years of the sclerosant. Other case is a superior pubic rami aneurysmal bone cyst, six weeks post CT-guided sclerotherapy and four years post CT-guided sclerotherapy. This is a case of a 40-year-old female who presented with a proximal tibia ABC. Again, the classical fluid-fluid level seen, six weeks post sclerosin. But in her case, there was no clinical improvement, and she had complaints of increase in pain and difficulty in moving around. So it was decided to undergo surgery for her in the form of curettage, cementing, and plating. She's doing well now, four years post-surgery. Another case, one-year-old child left proximal tibia aneurysmal bone cyst 
sclerosant injection given for him, the second sclerosant injection given for him, and the third. There was a stability of the lesion, but six months post the scler third sclerosant, we noticed that it was going into a varus deformity, which required a surgery for him. So we gave a curettage bone grafting and a corrective cast for him, six weeks post that surgery and five years post that surgery. Coming to the follow-up that we had, we had a mean follow-up of 52 months with uh, one of the patients having a recurrence who was again given a sclerosant injection twice. He is now doing well and it's on regular follow-up. So 50 out of the 56 patients healed with sclerosant alone, that is, comes to roughly around 90% of our cases. So what are the advantages of sclerotherapy? Minimally invasive, cost-effective, avoids the surgical morbidity of a major surgery, easy to perform with reproducible results, and has good healing rates. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we are open to questions. We have about, I think we have about 15 minutes for questions. So anybody who has questions, come up to the microphone. I'm Takeuchi from Kanazawa University, Japan. I want to ask the last speaker for uh, school therapy. Uh, is there any risk of the damage for uh, growth plate? Sorry, damage to? Damage to growth plate, epiphyseal growth plate. plate. Uh, yeah. No, the, the thing is we uh, do it under image guidance. So we take care not to do that. And there is minimal curettage of the lesions. So and we take care not to damage the growth plate and it's only a sclerosant injection, and we have not seen any uh, mm -hmm. long-term effects of a, on the growth okay. due to sclerosant. Uh, I mean, the polytocanol has the risk of damage to uh, growth plate, not a procedure. Due to the injection itself, mm -hmm. uh, we have not seen any effect long-term on the growth or uh, maybe a deformity. That is not because of the injection per se is what we believe. Okay. And, uh, do you perform the biopsy for all cases? Uh, in, if it is radiologically, uh, it is pointing towards aneurysmal bone cyst, no. But if we have a doubt, we, yes, we do perform biopsy for the cases. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Dr. Apichat on the back. Thank you for your presentation. Apichat from Thailand. For the last paper, I saw your presentation about the pathogenic fracture at the subtocanalic of the proximal femur. Yeah. In that case, you use the sclerosing agent or you fix the bone first? Uh, we didn't use a sclerosant injection in that case. We uh, curated, we put a bone graft, and we prophylactically f we fixed the fi fracture. We didn't use a sclerosant in that case. Okay. So most of your case is the uh, all bone, bone healing only on the first injection, right? Yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Satoshi Tsukushi, uh, Aichi Cancer Center from Japan. And uh, yes, and, uh, similar question, uh, the sclerotan therapy for uh, ABC. And uh, it is very difficult to distinguish it and the uh, simple bone cyst and uh, aneurysmal bone cyst. And uh, how do you make a decision, a diagnosis of uh, the aneurysmal bone cyst? And how, uh, what do you think about the possibility of the, uh, the, your cohort contained uh, and the simple bone cyst? We, okay. uh, a simple bone cyst, we, yeah. usually, uh, we usually differentiate on radiological itself, but many of our cases were pathologically proven aneurysmal bone cysts. Huh. So it was after a biopsy itself. So that's how. Uh, but uh, some patient of the simple bone cyst uh, showed uh, and uh, free three level uh, logical findings. Okay. Yeah. So simple bone cysts usually they tend to heal on their own. So on um, observation itself, we have seen them to be healing. So, but in this particular case, we have not encountered any simple bone cysts in our study in this particular series. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Someone, someone has um, questions for other speakers besides the ABC talk. Uh, Dr. Jace, can you, can you? I'm afraid I was going to ask about ABCs as well. Um, so going back to that talk, it's a, a nice talk. It's a technique that we're, we're interested in. But um, in, in our unit, we published a paper that showed that a curopsy, simply putting a needle in, breaking down yeah. the septi like you did, but not putting any sclerotherapy yeah. in, we published our results, and we had 81% cure rates. Yes. 
So you've only increased that by uh, four or five percent. So do you really think that it really adds anything to it rather than just doing the curatage or limited curatage? We have per se not looked at uh, only curopsy and as a means of treatment. Maybe we will have to look at that in the future. But from our technique, what we do is we do the minimal breakage of the septae and then inject the sclerosant. So to be honest, we don't know whether it is the breakage of the septae that is acting or is it the sclerosant that is acting. Now, our paper would suggest it's just breaking down the septae. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's. On the back. Yeah. Uh, Jin I from I would like to ask uh, Dr. Song Hun Kim about your paper. It's quite interesting that you correlate the imaging with the prognostic factor of patient of osteosarcoma. But have you correlate your data with the matching status of your final histological pathological exam, Dr. Kim? Because uh, we all know that the matching status affects a lot to the, theta, uh, to the prognostic factor, such as the Birmingham classification. So, is it possible that your data, your factor might cause from the matching status rather than your imaging before the surgery? Father, <coughs> repeat your uh, question, repeat, please. Uh, have you correlated your data of imaging before surgery and the prognostic factor with the result of your Margin, uh, margin status of your histopathological exam because it is possible that your prognostic factor might affect from yeah, yeah, yeah. the margin okay. status. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, image study uh, was performed after, uh, after chemotherapy. Yeah, so, the, uh, so the image included the uh, chemotherapy effect. Okay? And uh, correlation with the pathology, pathological outcome, uh, is, it is not, uh, uh, is not uh, comparable because uh, the image is uh, not uh, reflect the effect of chemotherapy. Okay. Okay. Yangguk-chung from Catholic University. My question is also uh, Professor Sun-yeon Kim. So <coughs> you mentioned uh, uh, if the viable tumor cell is close to the neurovascular bundle after chemotherapy, the progress is not good. Yeah. That means the oncology result. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. local occurrence and if this has metastasis or just local occurrence? Both. Both. But uh, the, it is more, more uh, specific to uh, Local recurrence. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if the viable tumor cell is very close to neurovascular bundle, yeah. uh, surgical resection with neurovascular bundle sometimes just the neurovascular outer cyst, or uh, if necessary, some uh, including neurovascular resection and the reconstruction of neurovascular structure may be overcome that kind of uh, uh, poor prognostic effect. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the older case uh, I report was uh, uh, performed without reconstruction for vascular or neuro uh, neurological reconstruction. But uh, the neurovascular reconstruction is uh, not successful in many cases. So uh, if we uh, can re uh, resolve the structure, the resolution is uh, superior to reconstruction in my sink. So uh, uh, the restriction by uh, anatomical condition is uh, more, uh, still remain in the limb salvage surgery. Please. Yep. Uh, Dr. Vivek, uh, I'd like to ask you a question about your drug elution study. Um, and I must, I might have missed it, but I'd like to know at what time point you measured uh, the drug elution and what effect measuring at different time points would have on, on that study. Uh, particularly, if you're going to use a low dose like 2.5, you may expect the drop off to be quite quick and you won't have uh, the same, same inhibition over a prolonged period of time. In this study, we did not look at the elution at all. 
uh, what we did was we created the pellets and we looked at the, uh, the amount of inhibition on the, pe uh, on the pellet agar plate. Uh, illusion, we probably need to do another study to look at illusion uh, over time to see how long the drug eludes out of the antibiotic cement. But we have uh, done illusion studies on another study using a, a new third generation cephalosporin, which is specific for MISA. Uh, and for that study, we used PMMA, and we found that maximum elution actually goes up to three weeks. But if you use uh, PMMA with vancomycin, you know, uh, although standard teaching tells us it's six weeks, but the actual elution only goes up to three weeks. Okay, so calcium phosphate, you don't have that data we, yet? We don't have that data. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. so I think our time is up, so we'll close the session. Please give a big hand to all the speakers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, speakers. Uh, I have the pleasure of inviting uh, Dr. Ashish Gulia to the podium for the next uh, interactive case-based discussion session on benign tumors. Uh, may I request the panelists as well, Dr. Apichat, Dr. Ozaki, and Dr. Robert Grimer to be on the stage.